नमस्ते माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर मिसेस प्रीति सुनील जोशी वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन वालचंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर इन दिस सेशन ऑफ फिजिक्स वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द बेसिक्स ऑफ लेजर लर्निंग आउटकम्स आर बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू स्टेट द बेसिक वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल ऑफ लेजर एंड इंटरप्रेट the three quantum processes which are required for generation of laser light the contents include interaction of light with matter and three quantum processes with their features so before starting the session students i will like to ask you few questions my first question is have you seen laser light students please pause the video and try to answer these questions okay so if the answer of first question is yes then where have you seen the laser light then my next question is are there any differences between laser light and traditional light students please write down the differences on paper so laser is an outstanding inventions of 20th century it is an artificial source of light that differs vastly from the traditional light sources laser is a high technology device and the most sought after tool in a wide variety of fields such as communication guiding weapons surgery metal working entertainment etc but again the question is what is meant by laser and how exactly the light is generated actually laser is acronym of light amplification through stimulated emission of radiation however laser is not a simple amplifier of light but it is a generator of light now let us know when the amplification of light takes place it is familiar to us that when light travels through a medium it undergoes absorption and scattering processes light absorption means the transfer of energy from light to atoms and light scattering it involves change in the direction of travel of waves but students in these two processes light intensity decreases with distance in the medium but uh, we have seen in the previous slide that for laser it is necessary to occur amplification so when the amplification will take place yes the amplification will take place when there is an energy transfer from atom to light is such energy transfer possible actually transfer of energy from atom to light is not feasible from classical point of view however it is found to be possible when the interaction of light with medium is considered from the point of view of quantum mechanics so the transfer of energy from atom to light results in light amplification a laser is a monochromatic coherent light source that depends on quantum processes for its operation it is therefore necessary to first understand the quantum processes in order to understand the operation of laser let us consider a material medium which is composed of identical atoms atoms are characterized by many energy levels but here for the sake of simplicity to understand let us assume that the atoms of the material medium under consideration are characterized by only two energy levels that is energy level e1 and energy level e2 where e1 is the ground state and e2 is the excited state 
as the atoms of the material are identical majority of them occupy the energy level e1 and the others energy level e2 now let the radiation be incident on the material and we assume that the radiation of the medium are in thermal equilibrium the incident radiation may be viewed as a stream of photons let each photon carry an energy e where e is equal to e2 minus e1 which is equal to h nu when photons travel through the medium they are likely to cause three different processes they are absorption spontaneous emission and stimulated emission now students we will discuss these three processes in detail with their features so students let's start with absorption suppose an atom in the lower energy level e1 and if a photon of energy h nu that is e2 minus e1 is incident on the atom it imparts its energy to the atom and disappears then what we say we say that the atom absorbed the incident photon as a result of absorption of sufficient energy the atom jumps to the excited state e2 and this is known as stimulated absorption transition in this way in each absorption transition one atom is excited and one photon is lost from the incident light beam now suppose a is an atom in the lower state and a star is an excited atom then we may express the absorption process as a plus h nu gives a star the features of stimulated absorption are it is induced absorption means it requires some external energy in each absorption an atom in the medium is excited and one photon is subtracted from the incident light beam induced absorption involves the excitation of the atom to the fixed higher energy level now another process which can occur is emission when an atom in the lower energy level is excited to a higher energy level it can't stay in the excited state for a relatively longer time in a time of about 10 raised to minus 8 second the atom reverts to the lower energy state by releasing a photon of energy h nu the emission of photon occurs on its own and without any external energy given to the excited atom thus emission of a photon by an atom without any external energy is called as spontaneous emission the process may be written as a star gives a plus h nu now let us see the features of spontaneous emission emission takes place without any external impetus process is probabilistic it is not controlled from outside the instant of transition direction of emission of photon the phase polarization state of photon all are random the emitted light is incoherent light is in the form of short duration wave trains emitted in all directions the intensity goes on decreasing as the wave trains travel away from the source the light emitted is non monochromatic here no amplification of light takes place it is the process of spontaneous emission that dominates in conventional light sources in 1916 einstein showed the existence of equilibrium between matter and radiation required a new radiation process that is called as stimulated radiation it requires the presence of external radiation 
if an atom in the excited state interacts with a photon with energy h nu which is equal to e2 minus e1 then the photon induces the excited atom to make a downward transition well before the atom can make a spontaneous transition the atom emits the excess energy in the form of a photon as it drops to the lower energy state the passing photon is not at all affected while the excited atom emits a photon thus the phenomena of forced photon emission by an excited atom due to the action of an external agency is called stimulated emission or which is also known as induced emission the process may be expressed as a star plus h nu gives a plus 2 h nu dear students here at the output we are getting two photons that's why we have written in the equation 2 h nu the photons induced in this process propagates in the same direction as that of the stimulating photon then the induced photon has features identical to that of inducing photon it has the same frequency phase and plane of polarization as that of the stimulating photon then the outstanding feature of this process is multiplication of photons also we can state other feature of this process as the process is not random like spontaneous emission it is controlled from outside light amplification takes place emitted light is coherent directional and monochromatic students please pause the video and try to write down at least six differences between spontaneous and stimulated emission let's check your answer so students we have seen that for laser light to be generated it requires amplification of light and amplification of light takes place by stimulated emission but we have also seen that for stimulated emission it requires most of the atoms should be present in the excited state and excited state has less lifetime <laughs> so now the question is how the number of stimulated transitions can be made larger okay so for this see you in the next session thank you